Good day, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the Wake Back to Podcast, broadcasted live from House Nidrium. Um, today, I am here joined by the one and only Senzai. Welcome. And today, What's up? Yeah, well, today, we're going to be talking about, um, well, I'm going to ask questions to Senzai, of course. Um, and we're going to talk about the different techniques and methods you can use to get lucid. So, first, please uh, introduce yourself to the crowd, Senzai. Hey, what's up? I am a 28-year-old lucid dreamer. I've been lucid dreaming for seven years, and I have about four, four to five thousand lucid dreams. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying dreams quite a bit for the last few years. It's been great. So, um, of course, the first question, the most logical question: How was your night's sleep that you uh, that you had a couple hours ago, or a couple hours ago? It was uh, pretty long ago, but uh, it was pretty pretty good i had some early lucids and then i kind of went away from those to just have a, about seven dreams last night jesus i've always been wondering because you say you have early lucid dreams and that's in like your smaller rem periods right yep um, um, do you notice any difference between your early rem period dreams and your late ones uh it really it depends a lot on how i get them but i think a lot of it has to do per person like i if I get a really early dialed, uh, then it seems to be like very, very solid. Like I don't, I don't wake up from them ever, uh, like prematurely. It never seems like I woke up from those prematurely. Mm -hmm. uh, it almost seems like I'm trapped in there until the end of the dream, <laughs> uh, which is kind of nice. And and then, uh, yeah, then there's just um, like yeah, later on it seems like I'm a little closer to waking, but uh, it's still yeah, it's a little harder to get lucid in the earlier ones for me. A, still have you ever been lucid in like your first dream that you had the whole night oh yeah uh, i mean i've done the like the forbidden wild tech where you uh you go wild oh, in the no. first dream of the night <laughs> yeah no where you're like still for like 90 minutes and just don't do anything and just wait until you get into like sp yeah yeah oh, that was pretty, pretty much just like well i used to try that well, in, the, in the beginning like i would just lay still for like like an, an, an the whole hour <laughs> and then i'd be like okay this is getting boring and i just get up while i was like in near hyper um hypnagogic state oh, man, <laughs> that, that, that was torture it fucked up my sleep as well because i just go oh, to yeah. sleep at like the same time and then i'd have an hour less of sleep just because oh, i'd just be there laying still and just swallowing everything and stuff oh it was terrible it was <laughs> terrible okay so um um so you so you said you started practicing around six to seven years ago right yeah yep. five thousand lucid dreams that's that, that's insane so um wh what do you like to do and when you're lucid, like do you, do uh, you do self-exploration or creation or? Yeah, I I do a mixture of both. So when I first started lucid dreaming, I almost quit um, because I was getting really bored. I mean, I, I don't say bored. Like, I, uh, let's see, after a year, I was getting kind of bored because I didn't know. I felt like I could do any dream control I wanted if it you know, just give me like five or six tries and I'd be able to do it. But that was kind of boring for me because then, like, I'm just kind of doing a dream control, doing a dream control. And so then I started uh, really wanting a persistent realm, really wanting to uh, make things that I could just go and explore and things that are more finite that I can actually explore and, it, and go back to and spend time in, and uh, talking to dream characters and uh, playing video games, stuff like that. There's, there's a lot of stuff I love doing. So you basically created a second world, like basically, um, you have your waking world, and then you have your, um, your dream realm, of which you go in, in like every dream or. Uh yeah yeah Zodra I go there uh, every dream and uh, yeah it's it's got some dream like rules it, uh, any dream that I have. Uh, can is there so it's like if I have a dream that I'm like a pirate and a pirate ship going through then I'm it's still in Zodra uh, but um, yeah it's it's going to be it's going to have the feeling of Zodra and I could always run into a persistent dream character or a dream item mm -hmm. uh, things like that which is also really weird whenever you think that you're a pirate and then you see like your dream character friend like flying through the air and you're like oh crap like <laughs> 
Man, I'm that totally sounds, dreaming. <laughs> that sounds insane. But you are. I'm so basically. I'm. Mean, you just told me that you only get lucid when you see like, and things that are, are different in your own persistent realm. Or are you just like automatically lucid whenever you get into the realm? Or. Uh, it really it depends a lot. I have a lot of dreams where I just. I, I, it's almost like I'm not even sure sometimes if if you would call them. I, I stopped counting how many lucid dreams I had because it's hard to tell whenever like if I know that I'm in Zodra, uh, then is it a lucid dream? You know, even if I know I'm in Zodra, I know that it, this, and I don't actually stop down and think, is this a dream? Uh, so it's kind of difficult when it comes to that. But uh, I also get lucid sometimes just by noticing anomalies or uh, wild, or sometimes I just end up. Um, like I just like realized like right at the beginning of the dream like that the dream just formed or uh, a, a big a big one is like if I get confused by anything like if I'm like looking around and I'm like wait a minute this doesn't make any sense my initial reaction now is uh, if something is confusing then it's probably a dream oh you never get confused like IRL like, like what do you do <laughs> when you get confused IRL you just like, like jump up and trying to fly or something <laughs> well, it's a it's a specific kind of confusion. It's more like uh, what would you call it? almost like a physical based confusion. Like, like oh wait, that door wasn't supposed to be open, or like if something. It I would say it's like almost something seems off, but a lot of times it's more like confusion with what I'm doing too. Like it's like why would I do this? Why would I go here? Why would I? Why would I be here right now? Why would I be? Um, mm. You know, fighting this person. Why am I yelling at this person? Things like that. Like I. If I'm questioning what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, uh, then usually... Oh, oh, of course, because your awareness in waking life is at such a state that you are that, that, that you basically always know why you're doing the thing you are doing right now. Yeah, yeah, I like to be very intentional about what I do. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. So what you also said is you said that you saw a dream form in the beginning of a dream. So, so that's basically from DILD, right? Uh, no, it's, uh, so it's, it's interesting because it's like, um, you realize you're dreaming and, uh, as you like look around, like you can see that the dream is just like forming. Like it was blackness a second ago. You can barely remember a second ago usually. Uh, and then the dream around you is just like starting. Usually something will like kickstart it. Like someone will start talking to you or something like that. And it'll, they'll try to get your uh, attention most of the time or something will draw your attention towards something and uh, you have to like i always slow down look at my hands and uh, just raise my awareness right there it's like you put your render distance higher in a game but like you first only see like a small bit and then it just keeps expanding like around you like. um uh, more like um uh, uh, it's usually huh it usually is more like immaterial like it's almost like the world around me it's just like becoming more solid um yeah and sometimes man sometimes you just like you just realize you're dreaming you're in a solid world and you have no idea like where you are how you got there um you're just kind of like whoa i'm dreaming and i don't remember one second ago but i'm dreaming now so oh that's weird to grasp because for me i only get lucid when like um there's this thing in my dream that's like actually really weird like um my first lucid dream was when i died in my dream and i was like wait this is not supposed to happen i'm not supposed to be able to respawn after i died so <laughs> i guess i'm dreaming and then my second one it was just because i was still like kind of awake in my dream so i was just 100 percent aware so i could just, oh, wow. like, tell myself okay well this is like a dream or i was more of a thought form but it was, but it was still like I'm, I'm not sure yeah, how to as far as, yeah, as far as you know, you've never died and respawned. Maybe that's just the normal thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so basically what happened is I got shot in my back and I just dropped to the ground and I saw this hallucinative uh, things forming around me and then there just came a button that says, you died, respawn? Question mark. And I just <laughs> pressed it and then I was like, oh, wait, this is a dream. I'm not dead. <laughs> Yeah, and I wish that happened to me. One time I got shot in a dream and I was just like laying down in pain for like 10 minutes and then the dream ended. I was like, what? <laughs> like, come on. Like, realize yeah. you're in a dream or change dream scenes or something. That was painful. Yeah, I can uh, I can imagine that. So 
um, we had this question earlier, but uh, when you dream or when you t uh, try to lose a dream as a beginner, there's obviously a couple things that you need. We know um, that dream journaling is really good or well is like probably a thing you need to do, I'd say, because it's easy for like uh, dream signs um, to connect to your dreams by reading through them um, like all day and visualizing them. Um, but about like the key ingredients in the mental state of a person like awareness presence and such um, is there like a couple of things that you 100% re recommend to people that they must uh, train when they're trying the lucid dream uh, yeah and I'll try to be more specific this time <laughs> <laughs> uh, I uh, I think uh, self-reflection uh, memory and uh, persistence would be the main three and uh, everything else is kind of um, everything else is just kind of like a side thing that you would need for almost any any hobby. Like I mean, you need confidence, and uh, you need to be uh, you need to be able to like uh, read other people's techniques and figure things out. And um, dream journaling, I would say, is probably the number one way that we do self reflection, and it's probably one of the best ways. Uh, it's not needed, but it is very, very helpful. And that's because of the fact that you indeed are able to, to reflect on your dreams that you had the past nights and be able to find out, okay, so th oh, this is when I'm dreaming. This is, and um, these are the things that happens, which makes the ILDs more easy, I guess. Uh, yeah, it makes, uh, I would say it makes all of them more easy just because, uh, I mean, it's, getting to know your dreams it's getting to know your dream world you're able to connect to your dreams in like more of a logical way than you were before and then uh i mean if you can notice a flow like a pattern patterns towards your dreams patterns and your thoughts patterns in your uh types of dreams or dream items or how you feel in dreams uh then you'll notice them whenever you're in a dream too if you but you generally first have to notice them in waking okay so um so we started off with your memory it's obviously good for everything but it's also good to just be able to recall your dreams because it, it's kind of a waste if you get lucid and then you can't recall it so um and then we also have the fact that a lot of people don't have really intense and vivid dreams when they start off and that's also um, where dream journaling comes off, right? And where uh, awareness and presence are key factors. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. Continue, sorry. Um, so um, about awareness and presence, um, we know that I'm meditating before bed, it brings you into a more aware state, aware of your... Um, aware of your surroundings, your senses, uh, yourself. Um, do you meditate on a daily basis or on a weekly basis? Uh, it depends on the meaning of meditate. I, I have a very loose idea for meditation. Because uh, I do like a progressive relaxation uh, every night, every single wake back to bed. Uh, and I do visualization every single night, every single wake back to bed. I use a lot of different meditation techniques just in my daily life to remember things or to do things. Uh, if I have like a free few minutes, uh, I'll often just slip into like a meditate, a small meditation right there. And if I have a free hour, I often will just visualize for fun. <laughs> you visualize for fun? Yeah, I love visualization. <laughs> and then for you, your visualizations, what do they look like? Like, are they real? Or are they just pictures in the back of your head? Like, um, So it really depends on what I'm using the visualization for. I think visualization often um, changes depending on what you're using it for. Uh, like if I say something like a bear, your mind will come up with a picture of a bear, but just like just an idea for a bear. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like you need anything more. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, yeah, I, I like to move things around and just figure out different functions of how visualization works and how it, I can trick it into doing fun things. And yeah, I really enjoy it. But it, for me, sometimes if I want it to be like, I can just, 
or not sometimes, if I want it to be, uh, I feel like it's like a second screen that is just kind of always there. It's not really like I'm not seeing it with my eyes and I'm not seeing it uh, like behind my eyelids or anything like that. I just, it's just there. Like it's like a visual image. Uh, and I you know it, it can move around like I can move around here. And uh, my smell and like hearing and touch are not that as great as my visual. Like my visual, I feel it's very, it's like 100% when I do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the rest of the senses are very low unless I close my eyes or lay down and relax first. Oh, oh that's insane. So actually when you go to sleep, you do visualization as well when you do wake back to bed? And what do you use them for? To get lucid or just visual uh, visualizing? Um, a part of a dream that you want to experience or or, or like uh, so yeah my my lucid dreaming technique is very huh, it's it's very close to incubation uh, a lot of times which is that I kind of send the idea of dreams into a dream and I visualize to do that like I, I want my dreams to contain uh, certain things in them. So if I if I want anything specific in my dreams, like if I have a dream character I really want to see, I'll um, I'll visualize and I will get them into the dream. I'll buy, but that's that's sort of like it's a visual non visual thing where I'm trying to connect the ideas and uh, I have a few different ways to do that to where it really clicks for me. Uh, and to become lucid, it's more of like the lucid feeling and. Uh, like my intention, like really solidifying it, it with the feeling of a dream too. So, oh, you're basically forming a dream stage by yourself. If I get it correct, yeah, it's like it's like forming a dream stage, but um, it's it's like forming the kind of dreams I want, but um, not like with the intent to go in them like a wild. Just like forming the dream stage and then kind of sending it off into the future to to be had then. Ah, so what you do is you basically create a scene and then it will eventually, it will play out in either a dream today or a dream maybe tomorrow or next week. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it uh, the first time I did something like this was when I was like 16. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to use the force in dreams, which is just telekinesis. I wanted to like move things around with my mind. Uh, and so I, I kept going around all day, every day, just thinking like, oh, I can use the force. And like, I would imagine myself moving things around. And then uh, three months later, like in my dream, I started using the force. And the weird thing was, though, that like with that specific type of incubation where I did it like all day, every day, and uh, it wasn't like directly with the like um, pushing it into a dream mm -hmm. because of that, um, at, I didn't just start using telekinesis one night. Uh, I use it any time I'm in a dream and fighting someone. Like if I need to anything, even if I'm not lucid, I'll start using telekinesis. So you basically integrated it as a part of your dream self, like as a, a skill you've learned. Right. And I, I did a bunch of different dream controls like that whenever I was that age, because I didn't know what lucid dreaming was, basically. <laughs> so you basically at that age, you, who got lucid, you just like, you didn't know that you were lucid? Oh, no, I didn't. I, I didn't know it was a dream. Uh, my idea was to just experience interesting things in dreams. Uh, and uh, I didn't think about the fact that you could realize during the dream it was a dream. Mm -hmm. There was one or two times where it happened. But um, like one time it happened be and then it was a nightmare. So I woke myself up and I just I'd always done that when I was a little kid. Oh, so you basically you while you were inside of the dream you had no clue you were dreaming but while you i woke up you were like oh i was just in a dream yeah yeah and i've always had very very vivid dreams yeah lucky you man <laughs> i'm jealous yeah i remember one time i was like i had a flying dream and then i had a false awakening uh, and this was way before i lucid dreamed or anything like that and i was like okay i'm gonna go fly and i was standing at the top of my stairs and i was looking down and i was like i don't know I don't know if I can do this. And, and I stood there for a couple of minutes and then I woke up and I was like, dang it. Man, I am so jealous about the way that you naturally, uh, you naturally have vivid dreams because that's like the struggle that I'm getting now to like get myself vivid and in the dream. Well, um, okay. So um, 
um, we're talking about um, the techniques and the methods. Um, you've talked about your visualization, about, um, well, I know that you do like a shit ton of wake back to beds. Um, your beginner uh, strat is always after six hours of sleep, do a wake back to bed every 10 minutes, right? Uh, that, that is one way that I, I always recommend for people if they are, um, if they have a few extra hours of sleep every night, like if you're able to sleep like nine hours or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, then that, that's a good way to do it. I also, if you're wanting for like a wake back to bed strategy for every night, I recommend putting them about an hour apart and doing three to six. Uh, but the, but the consistent wake back to bed, wake back to bed every 10 minutes, uh, that that's a really good one if you can fall back to sleep it's it's hard to not have a lucid dream if you can fall back to sleep and you do that a few d mornings in a row okay so actually i'm gonna try it this morning or like the next <laughs> right. morning I'm, I'm gonna do it i'm gonna let you know and if i get a lucid dream um um <laughs> i'll give you uh I'm, I'm not sure i'll just spawn you in my dream um okay. do it i love i love dreams about me yeah, but you change your profile picture to to a blood moon, so now I'll just spawn a big moon, and then the gravitational pull will just be too intense and suck me out of my dream. <laughs> okay, so um, um, yeah, so a key factor, or I think also one of the most important uh, techniques, is the wake back to bed, and that's because you'll be more connected to your dreams because you know if you have a good recall, you'll basically recall a dream after every wake back to bed, and you said. Um, if you have, if you want to do normal wake back to beds, do them every hour. Um, from what I read in a lot of uh, posts on uh, Dreamviews or Reddit or tutorials, I always uh, get told to do them every 90 minutes. Um, why do you say every hour? Like, isn't that annoying because you'll wake up in the middle of a dream or in the middle of an, an REM cycle? Uh, so, my something for me is like i i never really worry too much about uh dream or rem cycle i feel like uh anytime i'm sleeping i'm pretty much in a dream uh i think the, you have you have nrem dreams you have rem dreams mm -hmm. and the reason i do an hour actually it doesn't have to do with uh like because some people want, are like oh it's because you want to interrupt the dreams and i'm like not really it's mainly the closest that i can make them where it doesn't seem to disturb my sleep so it's basically also a trial and error for yourself to find out how much wake back to bed you want to do, how much time you want to have in between them. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the, a lot of things just break down to with um, trial and error, you know, how, how often can you do it? How well can you do it without stressing out, without freaking out or without feeling too tired in the morning? Cause <laughs> you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to freak out. Uh, I've, I mean, I've had times where like I did so many wake back to beds or something like that that I just like woke up and I couldn't get back to sleep and then I was like up for eight hours the rest of the night because I just like was way too many wake back to beds way too early. That was when I was trying to do a ten minute wake back to bed though. I remember when I did a wake back to bed once. <laughs> like I think I had four in a in a night and I just like uh, I think it was the first to last one. I just I literally was so confused that i just shouted at my alarm why the hell are you ringing and then i just i, I was just <laughs> like i was so mad that i just couldn't get back to sleep and i was just mad at my alarm like not at myself for putting the alarm i was just mad at the alarm for making noise it was the worst night i ever had and like i think i slept five hours and then i was just like okay i'm not gonna sleep because my alarm will ring again it was so delusional back then Holy yeah, God. you don't want to ruin the rest of the night, and you don't want to ruin the night after. That's always yeah. my thing, is always always lean towards sleep, which is, like, if I'm not on a good sleeping schedule, this is actually why I say three to six, uh, because I always plan on getting eight hours, but if I'm way too tired, uh, then I'll wait till the fifth hour, and then hours five, six, and seven, I'll do a loose, or a wake back to bed. Um, so when you do a wake back to bed, you wake yourself up uh, by using intent, right? And not with an alarm. Uh, yeah, yeah, intent. I, I can't use an alarm or my wife will stab me, which I <laughs> say all the time, but I actually had a dream last night that my wife was trying to stab me. Oh, that's nice. 
It yeah. sounds like a great dream. So it's how you use <laughs> our natural awakenings after your dreams, right? I I actually see that's the thing. Like I I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I use natural awakenings or not because I just kind of plan. Uh, let's see, my intent for it is very strange because I always hear people saying they want to wake back to bed after an hour, or two hours, or three hours, and. Uh, my intent is more vague than that. I just say I want to wake up when it's the best time to wake up for a lucid dream. And uh, that ended up, at first that would end up with like, okay, I didn't wake up that night. So then I had to make it to where it was a little more intense, <laughs> intense. And you then, and then I will but you're not going to yeah, wake you, up. Yeah, you don't get a lucid dream tonight. And then it took a few tries and I found out like, I, I can't put it straight into words. It's more like, I, I, I tried it with words at first because I used to put it exactly at words, like three o'clock, but I stopped doing exactly with words because one time I put intent for three o'clock and in a dream I was, I don't remember what I was doing, but then all of a sudden I felt myself being yanked out of the dream and I had to like really pull it together, which I, I didn't have to stabilize at the time. It was really rare for me. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, what is happening? And so I kept, kept myself down there for a few more minutes. And then when I woke up, I looked at the clock and it was 3.03. Oh, that's awkward. And I was like, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, I can't use intent with exact time anymore. Or I could interrupt my lucid dreams. So, um, so what I, and before I started to practice the lucid dream, what I used to do is when I, um, when I would have to go to work, I just like, um, for some reason, m m my brain knew, okay, you have to wake up at like 6.50 or, or at 7 o'clock. And then, wh whenever I, um, whenever I'd go to sleep and I'd, f I forget, I'm to set my alarm. For some reason, I would always wake up at seven o'clock. But now, when I try to use intent to like wake up, it just doesn't work. Is it because the intent is too forced? Like it's not an intent anymore. It's just, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how to call it. It's just like. Yeah, that it's too forced and not like free reeling intent, or, or what would you say uh, about that? Uh, let's see. I would say, yeah, I don't know. It's it's hard for me because, um, like, with intent waking up, I um, there's there's a couple of ways. One thing, waking up with an alarm like that, um, and then having the alarm turn off, is that your body actually doesn't like being woken up by an alarm. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if you actually have enough sleep in a night uh, and you have an alarm going off um, and you have it very similar every day, your body will actually wake you up right before the alarm usually. Sometimes you won't even notice that. Uh, and you will just like wake up and you think you woke up to the first part of the alarm, but you actually woke up right before it. Uh, but then if you turn the alarm off, then it's crazy because then you wake up at that time. But um, yeah, with the intent to wake up, like at a, that, at a specific time and then it just not working. I, I think a lot of 